The second experiment was to take water and now decrease the pH of that water by one full pH unit with no chemical additions. Same measurement accuracy. Water in equilibrium with air. This next figure shows again the same kind of behavior. That is that the when you put the pH electrode in the water, it starts at a certain pH and very quickly adjusts its, its measurement value to that of the thermodynamic equilibrium for the uncoupled state of that particular water. This particular water is a mix of commercial water and high purity water, so that it's more alkaline than the previous example. And again, in this case, after the short buffering period, we see the pH slowly drop. And if I had continued this result, it would have dropped approximately one pH unit over the order of six, seven, or eight days. Again, a very robust result. So again, it was very successful. Now we have done this kind of experiment or both of these experiments on water that is high purity, of water that's very acidic, and of water that's very alkaline. So the whole gamut has been successful. The third experiment was to take a simple biological molecule, that is a specific liver enzyme called alkaline phosphatase, and take a space that was already at the coupled state of physical reality for this experiment. And we would take a mix of 50% pure water and 50% alkaline phosphatase molecules. And we would bring them into this space for a period of time. We would measure the, thermo the chemical activity before moving the solution into the, this coupled space. And after a period of time, we would take it away and we would measure it a second time. We found that when we left the solution in this coupled state, space, for just 30 minutes, we increased the chemical activity by 25 to 30 percent. This is a very big effect for just 30 minutes of exposure to such a space. And we found that by doing this experiment many times, the statistical p-value was better than 0 0.001. That means that the probability that this result occurred by random chance was less than one chance in a thousand. Going to the fourth experiment, we dealt with a living system, and that was fruit fly larva. Again, we treated the fruit fly larva in a space conditioned for the experiment. The intention in the imprinted into the, the intention host device for this experiment was to increase the energy storage molecule of the cells, that is the ATP, compared to its chemical precursor, ADP. So we were looking to increase the ATP to ADP ratio by a significant amount. And by doing so, we anticipated that the larvae would be more physically fit and that therefore they would have a greatly reduced larval development time to the adult fly stage. Our results for this experiment in which we exposed the fruit fly larva for their entire lifetime to the adult fly stage. Generally, that's about 28 days. We found that we increased by measurement the ATP to ADP ratio by the order of 15 to 20 percent and reduced the larval development time to the adult fly stage by 20 to 25 percent. In both cases, the p-values were better than 0 0.001 and 
I hadn't mentioned, but this was compared to the controls, both in this experiment and we had controls in the previous experiment. So all four of these experiments we thought were robustly successful. In fact, we named them the four experiments that changed the world.